This is Rod Stewart, and you're on Music Feeds. Now, um, let's get straight into it. Chasing Yesterday is uh, one year old. Yes. Yes. Now, now looking back on um, on the last year, how has that album sort of changed for you, or has it always stayed in the same way? Do you see it differently? Um. Yeah, I went off a couple of songs on it, and then I've kind of recently got back into those songs I went off, mm. and I think the good ones still sound good, and uh, it still sounds uh, sounds good when I'm playing it a year after. So mm. I think it. I think it was. Um, I think it's done all right, you know. It's in, just in, done all right. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, I, you know, these things are hard to judge these days because nobody mm. buys any records anymore. So it's like, yeah. well, they're certainly not buying any of mine. <laughs> so um, it's hard to judge what uh, what successful albums are these days. But the people that come to my shows seem to like it. So what can I say? Has that has that changed your approach in any way? Um, uh, when it comes to either writing or performing or touring. Well, be yeah, I mean, I've, I don't, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have a record deal anywhere mm. in the world. So when I left Oasis, I didn't re-sign a record deal. So I kind of do my own thing, and uh, everything that I do. So I license my records all the way around the world. So I don't. Everything that I do now is done, <laughs> is done to a budget, which is shit really, <laughs> because. Uh, I mean, the, uh, yeah, to be an independent artist, a worldwide mm. independent artist, it's not cool. Not cool. There's not many private jets anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not many limos. Yeah. Everyone's traveling in a fucking shitty van. Yeah. Uh, but saying that, it's a lot more noble. Mm. And uh, it means I don't have to deal with people from major record labels who, as we all know, are fucking cocksuckers. I mean, when did you decide that you wanted to move away from the labels? What was the, the defining decision? Well, I thought, I think if you can afford to make your own records, then you should, because what's the point? What's the point? You're just borrowing money off a record label. Mm. And, you know, um, the, 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 the climate which the record business is in, nobody knows where it's going to end up, the music industry. Mm. And uh, I can't have people younger than me mm. telling me what to do. Mm. I fucking knife people for that, you know what I mean? So um, it's best if I'm not involved with them. Mm. Well, I mean, here you are answering my questions, so... <laughs> but you're not telling me what to do. <laughs> All right, mate, listen up. <laughs> now, um, I do want to read a quote that um, I saw you uh, say with us a couple of months ago. Music um, has nosedived into fucking blandness, a sea of cheese. Mm. Now, who can you tell me in particular that has caused that? And who have you seen that is counteracting that argument? Well, if you think of the biggest... In the 90s... I don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. I don't really care either. I'm talking about in, in the UK, yeah. the 90s, the biggest records of the year would more often than not be by bands who wrote their own music, mm. who played live. And now the biggest records of the year are by acts, in inverted commas, that don't write their own music and who you rarely play live mm. and to me that's not to me that's not the word I'm looking for it's not it's not real you know it doesn't make yeah, okay. any sense to me mm. I was brought up from music from the 60s and the 70s mm. and um, and the 80s when um, the biggest bands in the world were actually real bands you know what I mean and, uh, and I, 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 I struggle and fear for where we're going to be 10 years from now if the biggest pop phenomenon of the last 10 years is Adele where does it go from there mm. well it, as I was saying just playing devil's advocate here can you see that for musicians and singers and writers that aren't able to get their boost into the world do you see that that being writing for other musicians putting them in the workplace in the music industry do you think that's a good thing 
in any way because I mean every musician well, let's put it this way if you <laughs> we're living in an era where singer songwriters mm. don't even write their own fucking songs mm. okay so if you're a, if, so if you're having trouble writing a song I mean this is a radical fucking solution to this you know what you should mm. do is join a band mm. right uh, but mm. it, it's like you know you you see many most of the solo artists now have a team of songwriters behind them mm. and you know what the songs aren't saying anything to anyone do you know what i mean not that not that i'm an advocate of of songs having great strong messages or anything like that mm. but it should come from the soul of the person who's performing it do you see anyone saving it at the moment in any way shape or form not new bands no i mean all the the bands that we kind of still think are new, like Kasabian or the Arctic Monkeys and stuff yeah. like that. They're 10 years old now. Mm. So I'm struggling to think of a band that's come along in the last five years that have had any impact. I'm talking about bands here that play yeah. guitars. I imagine not the DMAs. I know I keep hearing about this band. I don't. I haven't. I've. I, I've heard of them. Mm. I haven't heard anything by them. They haven't. They've not made a. a uh, they've not made a noise in England yet, mm. uh, so I don't know anything about them. But apparently, they kind of they sound a bit like Oasis, and uh, which clearly must mean they're fucking amazing. <laughs> um, and, like uh, that turnaround. Yeah, and it's uh, it's a wonder they haven't made an impact yeah. in England. But um, I haven't, I haven't, I keep hearing on their name mentioned, particularly now I'm on tour in Australia. But yeah. um, I'd be interested to check them out, though. Absolutely. You're not in them, are you? Maybe. No. Oh, you'll never know. <laughs> well, now I better let you go because uh, you are performing tonight. Uh, will we be seeing anything spectacular besides? I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do. Uh, as we're playing at a blues festival, and I am, of course, one of the uh, foremost blues artists of my generation, I'm going to be doing a blues set. Awesome. Tonight. Just twelve bar blues. Uh, no, it's my it's a it's a style of music that I made my own, which is thirteen bar blues. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, which uh, I'm not sure whether the crowd are ready for this, but this is radical <laughs> shit that's going to go on tonight. Awesome! Uh, I'll be doing blues versions of all my classic songs. Good. So, um, you know, stick around. Stick around. All right. It no. could be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, mate. No it was worries. a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much.